It's well known that energy drink advertisements play out the ideas of risk-taking and adventure to sell their products. But what's less well known is how people actually feel when they consume them, especially if they're mixed with alcohol. INSEAD Professor of Marketing Pierre Chandon has done a study on this and he joins us now on INSEAD Knowledge. Pierre, thanks for being here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, my first question is, uh, there's been some controversy around the exact effect of uh, mixing energy drinks uh, with alcohol. What does your study show? So the controversy has always been whether mixing energy drinks to alcohol actually causing people to engage in risky behaviors or whether people who uh, like to take risks have a, just a taste for mixing alcohol and energy drinks. And we've never really known, but what we know, there's a strong association. People who mix alcohol and energy drinks have twice the risk of being involved in sexual aggressions or other uh, injuries. The question is really is what's causing what? And uh, what's interesting is that really for a while we thought that the caffeine in the energy drinks was dampening the effect of the alcohol so that people were drunk but did not realize they were drunk. And our research showed just the exact opposite. What we're interested in is in what are the psychological effects of knowing that you are mixing energy drinks and alcohol. All the research before that had been looking at what is the effect of the composition of the drink and they had given people the, the cocktail to drink without telling them what they were drinking. But in real life, we know what we're drinking. And as you said, all of these brands, Red Bull, Rockstars, uh, Monster, they have all these ads that associate their products with risk taking, with wild parties, etc. And we wanted to know whether this would have an effect. So what we did is that we gave 154 young men a cocktail. We should call it the inside cocktail. It was actually pretty good tasting. It had uh, 20 centiliters of uh, fruit juice. Uh, eight centiliters of vodka and six centiliters of uh, a Red Bull Silver Edition. We chose this uh, special edition because it doesn't have the strong taste of Red Bull and we didn't want everybody to recognize the Red Bull in it. And everybody drank the same cocktail. The only difference is in the branding. It's how we label the cocktail. For some of the participants, we told them the truth, which is this is a vodka Red Bull cocktail. And for the other participants, we told them either it's a vodka cocktail or it's a fruit juice cocktail. And then we waited for 30 minutes for the alcohol to go into the blood system, and we waited to see what happened. So after 30 minutes, we uh, measured how drunk people felt in different ways, uh, on different scales. And what was fascinating is that people who knew they had mixed alcohol and an energy drink felt drunker. 51% drunker, actually. So what we found is actually the opposite of what most researchers thought, which is that not only adding an energy drink does not reduce your perception of feeling drunk, it's the opposite. It boosts your perception of feeling drunk. And this effect is entirely a placebo. It's entirely in people's mind uh, because everyone had drunk the exact same thing. The other proof that it is a placebo was that we found this effect on perceived intoxication especially among people who believed in it. People who thought that adding an energy drink boosts the effect of alcohol were more likely to be influenced by the labeling of the cocktail. Mm -hmm. And uh, your study also shows that the, this effect um, was, uh, it went beyond uh, just the, the perceived level of drunkenness. Yes. So beyond feeling drunk, we wanted to see whether it had an impact on behaviors. So when we recruited these participants, we told them we were interested in uh, the behavior of young people in bars, and we had them watch some music videos, etc. So when they were in the mood, we had a number of tasks, and one of them was a gambling task. They had to uh, play a game where they were pumping a virtual balloon, and every time you the balloon you can earn money but then there's a risk that it's exploding and so what we found is that people who thought they had a mixed energy drinks and vodka pumped the balloon a lot more they were much more aggressive and they were taking a lot more risks the other aspect which was even more interesting is we're looking at the behavior of these young men in uh, around women so we show them 15 photos of women and we ask them to say for each of them if you meet this person in a bar um, how likely would it be that you would like to talk to her and seduce her? And also, how, how likely is it that she will uh, be responding to your advances and giving you her phone number? And what's fascinating was that even though they all had drunk the exact same thing, the young men in the study who thought they had mixed alcohol and uh, energy drinks, their ego was so boosted, their confidence was so high that they all said, no problem, of course I will talk to them, and yes, of course she will be happy to talk to me too, she'll give me her phone number. And what's interesting is that, is that they were even more selective than, than normal. So it's not like um, 
thinking that you, your drunk makes you see everyone as beautiful. No, no, it's the opposite. They really thought that they had a self-confidence. And uh, so participants felt a lot more brave with members of the opposite sex, also risk-taking. But did this also translate into uh, making them do other things? Like, were they a bit more confident getting behind the wheel of a car, for instance? And what we found was actually surprising. Uh, people who uh, knew that uh, there was vodka in their drink were actually more careful. We asked them how long they would wait until taking the wheel, and uh, they said they would take longer. So again, uh, people thought that the Red Bull was uh, boosting the effect of the alcohol, and for that reason, they were more careful before uh, driving. So I think here in that respect, uh, all of the campaigns against drunk driving have worked. Uh, because people feel drunker, they act more widely if you want, they take more risks, they are more confident, but they also are more careful when it comes to driving, which was actually a good news in our study. Mm -hmm. And uh, what should policymakers and marketers therefore take away from this? So the main take, the, really the big takeaway is that so far all of the studies uh, done by the FDA and the others to regulate the uh, sale and advertising of energy drinks, they have looked at the pharmacological effects. They gave the drink to people uh, in a blind test without telling people what they're drinking. And that's, of course, the importance. Uh, I'm not saying that there is no effect of the caffeine and the sugar, et cetera, in the energy drinks. But what we're saying is that we should look, in addition, at the psychological effects. Because in real life, all these brands, they matter. Uh, they uh, create expectations. They have an image that we show has an impact on people's behavior. And uh, this impact is real. Many people believe that placebo means it's not real. No, no, no. It's a real effect. It's been shown in science, in medicine, etc. It's a real effect, but it's not because of what's in the drink. It's because of what people think the drink is supposed to do. It's in the mind. It's not in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.